Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. Do you have is Road Redemption? You might have heard of this one some time ago, and you might be thinking, this sounds like an old game. Well, it certainly sounds like one. It's mostly because it is one of those early access games that's been in development for a long time. That's probably lost the attention span of most people. Can't really blame them for that. But it did come out of early access. Initially, when it came in, it was not well received. Bit of a mess, to say the least. But regardless of that, they persisted. And as it turned out, now that the game is finally released, as of this week, I believe, it's actually pretty good. So what is it? Well, it is a... I hesitate to even use this. I'm going to steal this directly from my colleague Jim Sterling. It's a road-like... Arr, arr. Actually, Jim, I think you mean uh, road light. Oh, a procedural death road or something along those lines. Procedural death road to Canada, maybe. Very much in the vein of Road Rash from back in the day, which I absolutely adored. I used to go over to my friend's house to play Road Rash all the time. What a great idea. Motorbikes, but also kicking and punching people off of motorbikes. What could you possibly want more than that? Well, that's what Road Redemption did, but they decided to throw in a few things like... A progression system, a little bit of randomization, some temporary leveling up, and also some permanent stuff. And as a result, they've come up with a campaign, and then Campaign Plus, of which there are a bunch of different levels in as well. And that is where you're able to unlock even more advanced stuff, quick play, and an online mode. I'll explain what each of them are in a minute. Firstly, we're going to dip into options and see what's going on here, though. We'll find out. So... A little basic, I believe this is based in the Unity engine, you can tell because good old uh, standard presets right there. Not a bad looking game, not a great one, but not a bad one. Decent amount of customization here, but things like an astropic filtering sort of missing from the standard Unity bundle of options. I do have a bit of a problem with people using that as a result. Do have a couple of nice things like, for instance, you can use second monitor if you like. Windowed full screen. Uh, the full screen doesn't seem to be true full screen. It seems to be borderless, which is not my favorite. Although I have been having quite a lot of borderless things pop up lately, which almost makes me think there's actually a problem with my machine and not with the games I'm playing. Sound, standard sliders, nothing really to write home about here. Everything you need. It'd be nice to have a jukebox because some of the music in here is pretty killer. Certainly on my alley. Now, if we had to inputs, one, we don't press any of those buttons because those are the wrong buttons. So, you do have quite a lot here. You can use your mouse and keyboard, and it's fine enough. It's as fine as a digital input device is going to be for controlling something that involves driving. It does make aiming a little easier if you happen to have a firearm, but it does make driving a little harder, so it's a bit of a trade-off. Key bindings available here. Unfortunately, they don't let you rebind the controls, so you'll have to use a third-party tool for that or something like Steam Big Picture. The default controls on the 360 and Xbox One pad are fine, as far as I can tell. There's nothing there that really rubbed me the wrong way, but being able to rebind that is always nice. Okay, so I'm going to dive into the campaign here. Now, I've made some progress because, as we said, it's got a little bit of roguelite in it, and that means that the campaign gets shuffled every time. When you die, you've got to start again, but... As you go through campaigns and die, you earn experience, which lets you put points into a permanent tree. And part of that permanent tree is you can start later on in the campaign, up to level 9. So you don't have to do the same levels over and over again. And it doesn't take you that long to get there, either. It only took me about an hour and a half to unlock the start of level 3 perk. So we're going to start at level 1 just to show you what's going on with it. And you can actually do this up to 4 player split screen, which is really surprising. <laughs> Don't really expect to see that. Now, as you can see, there's also a bunch of unlockable bikes, including the most ridiculous one. You've got to beat the campaign with nine separate riders to do that one. We'll go with the standard bike here. And you also have unlockable drivers. And these are all of the requirements. So there's actually a lot of unlockable drivers. These all have very different characteristics and weapons and things like that. So again, a lot more variety, a lot of replayability here. We'll go with the standard one just for the moment. So that's nice. You know, what they've really focused on in this game is the ability to replay it multiple times. And their use of the roguelite style of progression allows for that quite nicely. But there's a few interesting 
little twist they put into it. For instance, in a roguelite, when you die, you usually die, or when you fail a mission, that's it. In this game, you can fail an objective and not actually lose the campaign, but you will be penalized with a 25% reduction in health. So, you are, it's going to get harder and harder if you keep failing. Now, these missions go across three different territories and three different gangs. The Reapers are kind of standard Mad Max style dudes, Sigma are a bunch of robots. As for the Phantoms, I haven't got there yet. And it's going to throw different objectives at you. In this case, it wants me to kill high-ranking Reapers before we reach the end of the track. So I'm going to exactly do that. Now, if you played Road Rash, you know the drill here. You have weapons and you can attack people with them. And you should, because that's what this game is all about. A little bit of racing, a little bit of the ultra-violence. There we go. So you can beat them to death with that. And you also are able to unlock different styles of weapons as you go. Now you have an attack button to the left and attack button to the right. And obviously aiming that's kind of important. You also have a kick. The kick auto aims one way or the other. So if you're dealing with like maybe too many riders and you think things are going to get a little bit messy, then the kick is a good way to clear people out. You can also do a grab if you're close enough. You can grab them and then slam them off the road, which is usually an instant kill. Now, in terms of the sword that I'm using right here, you might think, oh, you get bonus. Why don't you just use the sword all the time? Well, sword doesn't work very well against riders that actually have helmets. So what you want to do is try and knock the helmet off, and then you can decapitate them with the sword, and it even has a crit meter as well. So as you attack, you build up crits, and you can get instant kills and do all sorts of good stuff like that. As the game goes on, you'll not only be able to upgrade your different types of melee weapon, but you'll also be able to get guns and explosives and tasers and even jump jets. Yeah, I know, it's ridiculous. you got this uh, long melee weapon here, so it gives you a little bit more reach, a little bit of a slower attack. And there we go. Manage it nice and easy. So once you've done all of that, you are taken to a little quick screen. Now, these are temporary for this campaign. Once you lose the campaign, you lose all of these, but they will help you through. So I might want to, say, grab a different kind of attack, something that's going to give me... Extra stuff. Uh, let's get steroids. So that's a little bit of a damage boost there. And this is randomized and shaken up as well. So the further you get into the campaign, the more cool stuff you're going to be able to access. And it's going to be shaken up on a campaign guy by campaign basics basis. Sometimes you can get stuff that's going to help you, but also hinder you. But it's kind of a risk reward. Uh, the Midas Vest is a good example of that. You are able to get a bunch of extra XP and gold, but you do risk taking a lot more extra damage because your armor is halved, so worth bearing that in mind. Also, the game has some pretty crazy physics that are very, very enjoyable to use. Really cool. Oh my god! Like that. Arcade style of doing things. Driving feels pretty good, honestly. You've got a lot of really deep slides that can go on, and the speed at which you go, even on the slowest bikes, is really quite satisfying stuff. In this mode, we're actually mostly racing, but a good way to get rid of people who are having to be ahead of you is to, you know, bonk them on the head. It's a pretty easy way to go things here. And of course, you're going to get extra money if you do that anyway. The game definitely encourages you to fight. There is no doubt about that. You do also have the ability to block, by the way. So as you can see right here, if you hit A at just the right time, you can actually deflect. Some enemies are better at it than others. And some enemies will also drop bonuses. Uh, Power-ups to be found around the map. Nitro. Extra armor. Extra money and all that sort of thing. I'm going to charge up a critical here, even though he has his helmet on. This should still be relatively effective. And, of course, kicking people off the map and having them crash. Also, extra bonus. I think you can kind of clearly see already what's going on here. And the little nods to Road Rash all over the place. Like the neutral police who will just try and go after everybody. The very busy roads that are constantly going to give you extra challenges to deal with. The use of the nitro, the little upgrades and all sorts of things like that. The only issue I've got really is that, of course, during Road Rash, you're able to buy different bikes throughout the campaign here. You buy them separately and start a run with them. But honestly, the runs are relatively short. So it's not really a big problem that you can't get those. And you're always unlocking new stuff anyway. Even if you don't think you got much out of a run, you probably did get something because you ended up with some sort of upgrade that ends up being a permanent style of it. It's, some of them are not all that interesting, they're mostly percentile, but they do quickly rack up and you can unlock extra bikes quite quickly that way as well. In this case, we actually have allied riders on the field with us, so they're going to help me out and I'll actually be 
penalized if I decide that I want to blow them up, so I might want to avoid that. Also, I've got some plastic explosives. Let's find something to stick them to. You can stick them to a rider or a truck. Trucks are fun. We should do that. In fact, there's one over there. Let's go and approach that, and we missed it. Okay, well, never mind. Yeah! Get back on the road. I'll catch him next time. There we go. I'm sure that won't be horrible for him. <laughs> We're still on the track! You'd be surprised, more often than not, the levels are actually so open that you, in another game where you might go off the track and that'll be it, then you're actually allowed to get back on the track, which is a bit of a surprise. You can just jump right back on and keep racing. I enjoy that. I think those arbitrary empty barriers of death are not really all that enjoyable in most racing games. This one seems to understand that. The levels get progressively wilder as you go through. And there's one that I appreciate the innovative nature of it, but simultaneously hate the damn thing. It happens every time you transition from this set of levels through to the next set. There's a rooftop racing segment that introduces jump jets. And you might think that sounds hilarious until you realize you actually have to jump jet across the level without falling off the buildings, which... For somebody as bad at driving as me, it is basically my worst nightmare. So worth bearing that in mind. Not, wasn't a fan of that level, but I do definitely appreciate where they're trying to go with it and shaking things up. Now, one thing I don't really appreciate is that the starting levels are some of the dullest. They do vary things up a little bit. These, they sort of strap different parts of tracks together, but I see like shortcuts like this all the time. These are all predefined. You can't really get off that. Well, you know, I'll just put myself back on the track. You can't really randomly generate things like good shortcuts, so they made those and then insert them into tracks as and when they feel like it. So you you get a lot of very similar feeling tracks, even though they do, do have some shakeup here and there. It's mostly in the form of objectives that you're going to find that variety, not in terms of the tracks. And unfortunately, the starting tracks being the ones you're going to spend a lot of time on before you can really level up past them, and start later on in the game are, well, I mean, look at them. They're, they're desert wastelands, not the most interesting. There's some cool rooftop stuff and then some snowy stuff later on. I would like to see a little bit more of a shake-up in that, honestly. And this game is definitely providing you with some fun tracks, but they're not that great to look at. Thankfully, you are going to be spending most of your time chopping off people's heads, so maybe admiring the scenery is not exactly the priority here. This turned out to be a very, very enjoyable experience for me, actually. Mostly because I'm getting those really cool Road Rash vibes, but it's obvious they looked at what Road Rash provided and things like, you know, these days people really want a lot of replayability. How are we going to give it to them? Well, what about if we roguelighted up the campaign a little bit? We gave them a little bit of progression that always makes them feel like they're getting something new. And they went bonkers with it. You know, having to beat the campaign with nine different drivers to unlock some stuff. That's a lot of stuff available there for the completionist in you. So I do appreciate that they did that. That would certainly uh, be very beneficial, I think, for most people. I'll upgrade my sword here a little bit, I think. I'm not taking too much damage, but if I was, I could buy health throughout these levels here as well. You can see what's going on. This is a survival, so everything's a little bit shaken up. Every now and again, they also put these strange, random... What's the best way to describe them? Conditions on the races? I've only seen one of them so far, which was hallucinogenic chemicals, which actually throws trucks at you from the sky. That was highly entertaining. Now, I would like to see more of that. They don't show up very often. So maybe, you know, increasing the rate of those in a later update, maybe adding a few more, would help. I, f I loved that. That, you know, that, to me, was the most fun part of the game, when everything just got... It's already a pretty insane game anyway. Making it even wilder was definitely the way to go. And adding flying cars to the mix, yeah, that'll do it. They even uh, later on add things like the jump jets and also some other crazy stuff like grappling hooks. You can do a lot with those too. I just like the fact that they've embraced chaos. They've embraced silliness and stupidity. The feeling and the urge that you get when you play a game like Road Rash. And, hey, what could you do with modern physics? What could you do? Oh god, with a... Uh, modern progression system could you make could you make those games better and not ruin them 
Well, the answer is pretty much yes. I totally say in terms of its looks, it's not going to be winning any prizes there. It's about as basic as it gets, but it does run well, which is frankly more important. And despite not looking great, it certainly sounds great. You're a fucking artist. The road's your canvas, and you paint it with blood. I've sent a few of our boys to help you out. Try not to kill them. A nice mix of techno and metal going on with the soundtrack adds a very Mad Max-esque commentary that's inserted every once in a while. It gives me a little bit of a Carmageddon vibe when it comes to all of the bad language on sale. That's not a bad comparison, actually. It's kind of a bit of a sad comparison that when Carmageddon came out of Early Access, it ran like absolute ass. When this game came out of Early Access, it ran like a dream. I've heard that Carmageddon's got a bit better since then, but frankly, I haven't really had the time to go back to it. There's a few issues here and there. The popping isn't that great. It doesn't impede you from playing the game, certainly, but you would expect a game that doesn't have, let's just say, incredible graphical fidelity to maybe get a bit of a better handle on popping. They haven't, and as a result, there are certainly some noticeable pieces of terrain popping going on here with fairly poor texture quality, but usually you're bombing past it at about 200 miles an hour. It doesn't really matter so much. Oh, damn it. I'm going off the road here, I think. Yep. Getting back out of this, probably not going to happen. Aside from that, though, you've got a very replayable, very fun campaign. Good arcade sense of driving. A nice combat system that really got fleshed out. You know, they could have very easily just gone the route of hit things. But having an interesting parry system and the decapitation system, knocking off the helmets with the other kinds of melee weapons, throwing in stuff like sticky explosives and firearms of good measure, does give you a nice little mix, let you play different styles and also focus on upgrading the things that you like. Keeping that variety up is important, and thankfully they seem to have realized that, and I can't imagine some of the crazy stuff I'm going to end up getting once I finally get to the Phantom Territory and lock everything else. All right, I'm going to bail out of this for a second. Uh, there's one last thing that I would like to show you in the menu. We might even be able to get a game of it, since there is a, a small but pretty active community going on with this. And that is the multiplayer. So, nice little bit of value add for this. And obviously, I've shown you the local split screen that is available. Whether or not you actually end up having a group of three other people to play this game with, well, that's a different matter entirely. But there is a multiplayer mode as well. It's... Let's just say it is a little thin on the ground. It's probably the most fair way to describe it. It's perhaps uh, not all that well fleshed out. But it does exist. I think this would certainly be something to focus on in future updates. So if you head to online, this is literally... All that there really is. You can't set up your own server. You have to just select how many empty seats are needed. And it will usually gain a game relatively fast, but the only mode they have is a team-based mode. And they have a separate progression system for this mode here, as you can kind of see. Most of these bikes do seem to be mostly quite well balanced. They've taken the bikes from the single-player game and they've redone them so that you're not really at a disadvantage necessarily if you only have the low-level stuff. So you've got a separate progression here. And a shit ton, <laughs> a rather large number of unlockable riders, including Kickstarter backers there and stuff like that as well, that all have different abilities. You also can unlock different weapons as well. You can go up to sort of the AK-47, which uh, certainly seems like a better gun, but it definitely it has less ammo, so 
they've they've done a few things with this here and there to say, hey, all right, we realize that having simple progression is probably not going to be something that a lot of people enjoy. It's not going to be all that fair. So let's make sure that we balance things out a little bit. In this case, as far as I can tell, they sort of let you play around until you get enough people in. And it ends up being a team race. So getting the best results with your team is the way to go on all of these different tracks. But, and here's the jump jet, by the way. Yep, you can actually do that. Pretty crazy. But fun. Very fun. Ends up with some crazy stuff going on. That's the real problem, though. There is only this one mode, and you have almost no customization in terms of the lobbies. I think that's a, that's a missed trick. You know, a couple of different modes, being able to set up standard races, time trials, and the team racing, and all sorts of things like that. Maybe elimination mode, I think, would be good. And obviously being able to change various values to set up the servers in the way that you want would be a massive upgrade to this. Right now, this is about as bare bones as it gets. If you're going to buy this, please don't buy it for the online multiplayer. It does not have what it needs to be a justifiable purchase on the back of that alone. No way. No way in a million years. But you can tell it's got the basic bare bones of something there. And it works, at least. It, as far as I you can tell, I've played a few multiplayer matches. I've never really suffered from lag or anything. It is quite quick to get into a server. I have a feeling the setup they've got is because they were concerned about server population. I don't really blame them. A lot of these indie games suffer greatly from that later on. So I can understand why they've done it. But simultaneously, that lack of customization and options in the multiplayer makes the multiplayer on its own very hard to recommend. But it's there. You can play it. And maybe get a little bit of extra fun out of it as well. But campaign's the meat. And it's a nice piece of meat. It's a nice bloody piece of meat. It's a very enjoyable game indeed. And I think this one has emerged from early access with a few warts that are mostly cosmetic. But frankly, as a game itself, a very enjoyable time. No doubt about that. There is a lot going on with it. And the campaign is constantly something that I found myself dying in and just wanting to start again. Like, all right, I learned. Let's go again. And then finding, oh, my objectives are different this time. My unlocks are different this time. That's, this is awesome. This will help a lot. This will definitely keep me more interested. And it did. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> totally did. But yeah, this multiplayer mode, if only they fleshed it out, this could be a really nice box feature. As it stands, it just kind of is there. So if you happen to see this cheap, or you really want your Road Rash-style arcade violent motorcycle fix, you don't have many other options, and thankfully, Road Redemption's a pretty damn good one. You can go and get it on Steam for $20 of your regional equivalent. And I enjoyed it quite a bit. My name is Mid Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, by all means, do feel free to click the like button. If not, the dislike button is right over there. And I'll see you next time.